Hello friends, welcome back again to my channel after a big break. So good to see that quite a lot of questions from your side for each of my videos. I'm trying my best to respond to your queries as much as possible. So also based on your request in the comment session, I'm making some of the videos to clear your doubts or know-hows. So this is one such a video based on the request from few of my subscribers to make a video on the Canva Studio. So I'm making this one. So the content which we are going to see are purpose of the Canva Studio. So how to create a simple .cdd file from the scratch and how to link a .cdd file into the vector Cano and then to work on it. And finally, a live demo for the same. So before we get into the video, please hit the subscribe button if you would like to get more notification on future videos. Okay, let's get started. Let us look into the purpose of Candela Studio. Uh, the primary file which we will be working for diagnostic read or write operation is the .cdd file. And the abbreviation for this .cdd file is Candela Diagnostic Description. So we very often use this .cdd file in a vector Cano. Uh, but the uh, .cdd file shall be modified or created using the Candela Studio tool. You need a separate tool called Canva Studio in order to create or modify. Um, so each ECU will have its own dedicated DID definitions. So, so uh, one Canva file describes one ECU. It means that for every ECU will have its own dedicated DID. So you need to, uh, uh, based on those dedicated DIDs, you need to prepare the CDD file. So one CDD file, it represents one particular ECU definitions. So that's what we call it as uh, one Candela file describes one issue. Candela Studio also provides the import and export of ODX files as well in order to maintain the uh, vector tool chain. So these are the purpose of uh, um, Candela Studio tool. Secondly, we will see about how to create a .cdd file from scratch. So the prerequisites which are required in order to create or edit the .cdd file are the Candela Studio. So the Candela Studio, it comes under two different versions. One is the developer and second one is the professional version. So in either one of the version, you could be able to create or modify the .cdd file. So let us jump into the live demo. So in this uh, live demo, we will be seeing about how to create the .cdd file from the scratch. So for this, first of all, you need to open the Candela Studio application from the start menu. So if you have already installed the uh, Candela Studio, uh, you just need to open it from the go to the start and then open the Candela Studio. So once if this is opened, you will see the blank uh, screen like this at the first. And at the top left, you will have two options. One is for to create the new .cdd file. And then the second option is to open uh, the existing Candela file, uh, what you wanted to modify it. So uh, for this particular um, um, demo, I'm going to show it to you about how to create a new CDD file. So click onto the new and it will ask uh, the file to be selected, the template which is needs to be selected. Uh, the one the one good thing is that uh, you don't need to create this uh, CDD file from the scratch. To be honest, uh, you already been given with some .cddt, which is nothing but the template data. So as per the UDS, uh, 14229 uh, ISO 14229 uh, specification already this uh, template will be adhered to uh, what you can do is you just need to select the appropriate uh, template that you wanted to do select uh, work upon for example here I'm selecting the vector uh, UTS 2.3.0 so I'm selecting this you can click OK for this warning and if you see here already uh, the default structure is formed um, all you have to do is you just need to add uh, something specific DID which you have it apart from the uh, the UDS uh, uh, norms. So if I expand to the ECU information, you will find all the supported interfaces uh, which is supported by this uh, um, CDD. And at the same time, inside the fault memory, you will find the diagnostic trouble code related uh, um, uh, informations, uh, the default informations. And then in the base variant uh, is where you will find all the supported diagnostics uh, uh, classes. Uh, it has been grouped into different sections, for example. So uh, in the DITS, if you click, you will find all the DIDs, uh, uh, which is falling under different sections. But uh, inside the supported diagnostic classes, you will find all, all the DIDs in a categorized manner. So for example, uh, sessions, if you could expand it, uh, you will find the default programming and extended sessions already defined in this template. So you don't need to do it uh, by yourself uh, from the scratch. 
uh, it's already been available here. So uh, in this particular demo, I'm going to show you like uh, uh, how to add one particular DID into the existing uh, CDD template. So that's what I'm going to see. I'm going to show. Um, so that DID is nothing but the uh, the DID name. It's going to be lane assist button. So this is a, a DID name and the DID number. It is going to be 1518 and the size of this uh, did it's going to be one byte and the values the value description of this is zero it means uh, not present and one means it is present so this is what we are going to add into the existing cdd uh, template and then we are going to check how it works in the cano so let us check now uh, so where i'm going to add is something like i'm going to add it inside the stored data uh, it's not necessary that you have to always select the stored data every time you can select it based on your need, which particular DID you wanted to add it up here. Whether if you wanted to add something related to the routine, then you have to go into the routine control, which is already defined here. So uh, right click onto the stored data here and write and then select the new diagnostic instance. It means that we are going to create something new did which is not present in this existing stored data. Uh, here you will not find anything here to refer for. So you have to click the create with new identifier and then you have to enter your DID. So the DID uh, number, it is nothing but 1518 is the DID number. I entered and click OK. So when you click OK, um, a default structure is already formed for this DID. So the name of the DID, it is uh, DID uh, 0x1518. Uh, you can rename it as per your uh, need. What I'm going to do is, it's, since it's going to be a lane assist button DID, I'm going to put a naming for it. So this is a DID and uh, the name of the DID it is lane assist button and uh, the DID number it is 0x1518 so that it is easily traceable for us. And then I'm going to, uh, uh, here in the service section you will find uh, the three different services like read write and get scaling so i'm going to use the read and write and i'm going to deselect this get scaling so uh, here it will be asking for you to whether you wanted to uh, uh, deactivate or permanently remove it uh, if you want to use it at later point of time then you can use it or otherwise you can uh, click yes to remove it uh, now um, i have the read and write operations enabled for it and it is of a one byte data I'm going to remove it and show it to you from the first. So right click here and add a, a new data object. So you can you can do like a, a new data object or even you can select a bit field. For example, in this case, uh, we have a, a Boolean type a data type um, in, in the form of the values. So zero represents to not present and one it is it means present. So here. I'm going to rename that as byte one. And here the bit position, the bit is going to be the zero bit. Uh, I'm going to rename that as button and the data type. Um, I'm going to check for whether I have a zero or one data type here, which is already present or not. I don't see any one bit of uh, data type. Yes, we have like off and on, but if you want to have it in your own way, if you want to really customize this data type as per your need, DID need, then of course you have the option to enable, uh, modify it as well, the data type as well. So here it is like a one bit of uh, data we are in need. And at the same time, the name should be like present or not present. Um, so I'll show you like how you can uh, modify this data type also. So, let me do it this way. Yes, okay. so this one for that, you have to go to the uh, bottom and here you have a data type in common. So in this data types, you will have the all the data types uh, which, which has been used by the other DIDs. Uh, or it can be used also. So here you have the option of new as well, or you have, you can also copy from the existing and then you can modify it. So what we are going to do is we can also copy the data type, which is already present and you can right click and paste. So in this way, you have a copy of this off and on. Uh, all you just need to do is you just need to modify it. 
So if you double click on that, it will ask for the property and in the property you can put it something like uh, um, the name shall be off means not present and on means uh, present. It's a one bit of uh, data and of course here it means the, the motor the, the most. So zero value means not present and uh, one is present as per our uh, property of the DID. Yes. So once if this is defined, then you can click apply and OK. So uh, if you see here, uh, a new data type is uh, formed, uh, which we have copied it from the other existing uh, data type. Even if you want to create something new, also you can create it. Now I'm going back to our DID. So here, uh, I have the option to select this uh, data type. So let me scroll through and uh, you see now uh, the DID, the data type that we have uh, created, it is appearing over here. So you can select it. So now it means that this particular bit, if it is set as one means it is present and zero means it is not present. So this is something that uh, um, we can define it um, as clearer as possible. Uh, so that uh, when you try to use it in your uh, um, CDD file in order to access it, uh, it will be very much easier for your capital functions, function calls as well. Now we have uh, created this DID newly and we have added the properties. We have enabled the service uh, which is applicable and also we have added the data records uh, with the byte descriptions as well. So now our work is done. So now, now comes the saving part. You just need to save it up here and it will ask whether you want to create a revision or not. So you can leave the revisions open and save it. And it will ask like what what is the name that you want to create. So I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm just going to create. Uh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to replace the existing function. So now it's OK. Now the file uh, that we have created, uh, we have uh, saved it uh, in, in the name of uh, DID, in the, in, the, in the name of the DIAC as the function name. Let me show you. CDD file. So diag is a function that we have created. This is the uh, CDD file that we have created and we have saved at this point of time. So this is how you can um, create the .cdd file in the uh, Candela Studio from the scratch. So now we are going to see about uh, how to link this uh, created uh, uh, CDD file into the vector canoe. So the created uh, CDD file is in the name of uh, Diag. So I'm going to copy this into the configuration folder. Okay. So now I already have an opened uh, Keno configuration. So uh, where you have to go and link it is something like the diagnostic uh, tab. And in that you will be having the diagnostic ISO TP uh, uh, button you have to click. And then here it will ask for the, uh, it will display all the um, CAN networks. But you have to select the vehicle network which you wanted to uh, add this. So uh, in this case, I have the vehicle network configured in CAN1. So I'm going to add this .cdd file to the vehicle network. So right click and then add the .cdd file. So we have to select the CDD. So now it will ask for the file to be selected. So this is our created diag.cdd file. So I'm going to select this. And once if this is selected, it will get adds up into that particular CAN network with some default name as ECU, new ECU. So I'm going to rename this as uh, Diag again. And then I'm going to go to the uh, transport layer. So this is also quite important for you to make it to work properly. So here, um, if the existing um, request to ECU and response from the ECU IDs are, um, if, if it is matching your um, request and response IDs of your ECUs, then it's fine. You can leave it as such. Uh, if you have a different request and response IDs of your ECUs, then you can um, modify. You have to select this option like override manually. And then here you can go and change the ECU request ID and response ID. So in my case, the request to ECU, it is uh, 7C3. And the response from the ECU, um, it is 7C9. And also the functional ID is 107. And you can leave the rest as such and click apply. And once if you have done it, uh, you see already you, you you got the um, fault memory panel. You, you have already got some of the uh, session planners 
and as well as you got the uh, diagnostic consult panel so all these panels are created from this template itself but uh, our key um, part that we have to verify is on the diagnostic console so i'm going to go for the diag diagnostic console here i'm going to select that so here uh, you will be able to find so this is the actual cdd file that we have linked uh, you will find the entire structure here so uh, where we have added the did it is nothing but inside the uh, stored data uh, structure so i'm going to expand that if you could see here uh, this is the did that we have um, added like 1518 uh, for the lane assist button uh, and of course we have enabled two different services in it so one is the read and one is the write so you will see uh, based on the activation of the services it will get displayed over here so i'm going to select this one and when i select this 22 uh, 15 18 so you will see this particular um, value getting over here and at the same time when you when i select the 2e 2e it is for the right uh, um, service identifier so when i select the 2e if you could see here this is what uh, the description that we have defined uh, in our dot cdd file in uh, candela studio uh, you see the byte one and uh, in the byte one of course in the bit one uh, it gives a description about uh, what it is so you have we have defined like uh, not present and present right so this is what you, we could see it in the drop down here so uh, based on the selection the value will get changed for example now it is uh, zero means it is not present it's okay and uh, one means it is present so i'm setting the present and i'm clicking here if you see the value which will be passed along as a right data it is zero one here so now we will see uh, so i'm going to run the configuration i'm going to see whether this did how it is the created did how it is working fine um, now in the software, I think we have configured the uh, DID um, with the data as uh, present. It means that the, the button is already in present state. So let me run the configuration. And uh, if I uh, select this and I'm executing it, you see I'm getting the response from the ECU with the value as present. It gives, it takes, it gets the value from the ECU and it shows you uh, what is that particular bit value and uh, or the name the corresponding name that we have given in that way it gives the information as well so this is the uh, this is a good way in order to uh, get an explicit information instead of just the byte information sometimes uh, we will not be clear about uh, what is this byte is about in case if you are getting the response as fe means what is this fe means what is the respective bit corresponds to so it, it always uh, applies good or holds good when it comes to the uh, uh, boolean type uh, uh, boolean data type as well as for the coding data type where uh, you have a specific meaning for a particular bit for those kind of a dids you can go with this kind of an approach you can define such a kind of a data type in the candela studio so that will be even more helpful for you to uh, call this particular sub parameter from your capital functions it's, it will it will work good so now let me check for this um, uh, right did so i'm going to select the right did and of course it needs uh, me to go to uh, 1003 let me go to the select it as not present and i wanted to go into the extended session so extended session i can type it here as well as here so let me so now i'm into the extended session and i select it as not present i execute that I got a positive response now i'm going to read it you see here now it is configured it as not present and again i'm going to configure it as present so here go and select the present and then execute now i get a positive response for that and uh, now the value configured it is the button as present so this is how you could add any of your uh, dids into the candela studio and you can make it to work uh, in your .cdd and as well as you uh, can modify the uh, existing dids uh, any of the data type is changed if you want to change it or any ad additional description that we have added something like present or not present in that way if you wanted to do it as an explicit change of the uh, value description even in that case also you can modify it using the candela studio with that uh, we had come to the conclusion of this video Hope you got an insight about the purpose of Candela Studio as well as on the creation of GDD file from the scratch. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more future videos. Hit the bell icon to get instant notification on my new videos. Thank you and see you again in another video.